Hello everyone. In today's class, we are going to conduct ultrasonic phase uh, ultrasonic testing using this one. This is an angle probe. You can see the angle. It's 60 degrees. That means the refracted angle. The ray is coming outside of this one. Ultrasonic waves coming outside of this one is 60 degrees to the normal. And you can see the frequency in the model number. So, in the previous class, you're using this one. This one is called as a normal probe. It has a uh, transducer which sends at an uh, angle of zero degrees, so no refraction. So, let me just connect this one. It's very easy to connect. Just push it in. And we're going to calibrate this angle probe using these two blocks. You have this V1 block, that's a big one. And we have the smaller block, V2 block. We'll be using both to calibrate, find out the index point and calibrate the machine, set the PTL value. So let's start first by switching on the machine. So I can see machine is on. Now what do we need to do for calibrating this one? First thing, set the range. Range is 120 mm. So I think it's good enough. So, or I can just make it bigger if I want. So one more shortcut I have shortcut I want you to tell us. If I what happens if I press this button again? You can see the value is increasing. But if I press this button again, it increases at a bigger interval. So you can see it's changing 10 mm at a time when I rotate this knob. So I'm just making this 150 material velocity. Now we are using this probe. This probe uses shear waves. The waves coming out of this one is shear waves. If you look carefully inside of this one, you can see the black area. That's your actual transducer. And this white area, the glassy area, is actually your plexiglass, the wedge. And on the right side, you have something like uh, some something for diffusing the sound wave or reflector of sound wave. So let's clean this one. Also, we need oil, okay? Oil as coupling. So I'll just keep the oil on the background. Now set the velocity of sound to 3000, 130. That's the velocity of sound, shear waves in steel. So we can keep 3000, we can say 3250 is the actual velocity of shear waves in steel now d delay should be zero that the, that's the display delay now the probe delay set it to zero so let me press it one more time so you can see if i press it one more time it's going it's changing very fine tuning so it's done after this one is done you are ready for calibration so let's bring our big block here Let's make, just keep it here. Now you can see this scale here. This scale is for calibrating this one to find out the index point. Even you can see some scale over here. So it gives some kind of a scale to, to, to mark where is the index point. Index point is where the sound is exiting from the probe. So. Let me just put some oil on the top of this one. Now if I press here, I should get a peak. Can you see the peak? Yes, you can see the peak. But why you are getting that peak is because of this curve. The sound is going through this way. It's striking this curve area and then it's coming back and you're getting a defect at some, something like I think the radius is something, you can measure the radius, I think it's 50, it's 100 not 50, so the radius is coming around as 100, so I should get a peak at 100, you can see over here it's getting at 100, so what I am trying to find out here is I want to get the biggest peak possible, that is the point where I have the index point. So, whatever you're doing in this ultrasonic, so you're looking for the biggest peak. 
just try to rotate the knob go front and back so if you go only front and back you'll not get the biggest peak so here somewhere i'm getting the biggest peak now see on the screen you have a very red small red color pointer that's the a gate i can just move the a gate how should i move the a gate press the button a gate here just move the starting position you can see now the a gate is striking this one and is saying something like yes it's saying 109 and look carefully here here you can see the point at which the sound is coming is exactly at this whole point and we can say this is something like 12 mm on here so that is our index point let me just fine tune again okay you can see it's coming exactly at the top of this small circle it's something like 12 or 13 maybe on this scale so similarly you can use this we know this length should be 100 but it's coming around as it's coming around as 109 so what i want to do is i want to change this one you can see on the top side this is sound path of a gate is 109 so i want to add p delay so that this matches to something like 100 mm so how do i do it Go to the pace settings, increase the value of P delay. So you can see now if I just move this one, the red cursor, the peak is going to the left. Now I need to move the A gate or make it a little bit wider. This is too small. Okay, this one is good. So this one is, looks nice. Now I think P delay value is too big. Sorry, I have to hold this one down. So you can see, I have set the value of sound path as 100, that's the maximum value, you can see, I am getting a peak somewhere here and it's almost 100. So now my probe is calibrated, I have just corrected the P-delay value, now I can measure whatever I want to measure. But before doing that, what I want to show you is, I want to confirm the angle of the probe is correct or not, it's given 60, but I want to make sure. So on this block, this is the V1 block or IIW block. So you have some angle readings over here, 30 to 60. And on the back side also, you'll have some angles, 60 to 76. Okay, 76 is the last angle you can measure. Oh, sorry, you have still 80. So what I will do, I'll just go for the 60 angle. So if I try to measure this 60 angle, let me just put it this way, okay, that's good. So what is refraction angle? Ref angle of refraction is, if I put the probe on the top side here, somewhere like this one, what's happening is, uh, sound is, this actually it's damaged one, let's continue. What's happening is, the sound is going this way, it's striking this circular thing, and then it is coming back, okay? So we have this big hole, and the sound is getting out from here, striking this one, and coming back. So let me just put some oil over here. Oil or couplant. We are using oil as couplant here. So just put the probe here, and just try to move back and forth. And I think I have to raise the dB, so that's good. So try to find the peak. So over here is the peak. And you can see it's directly coinciding with 60 degrees. So we can confirm the angle of the probe is 60. Similarly, 60 is a common angle. Uh, 
uh, sorry for the disturbance. Uh, we have 60 here as well. Even if I put 60 over here, I should get the same thing. Well, let's confirm it. So it, the sound goes to this circle again and it comes back. You can see. Oh, it's working fine. Now uh, we are getting a very huge signal because the hole is nearby and there is less loss. So now it confirms this is 60. I'm getting a peak at 60. Same way, I want to test the sensitivity of this one. How do I test it? I can use the same small hole uh, for testing the sensitivity. Put some oil here. So just make an angle of 60 with this one and you should get a peak. So you can see this is the peak. I have to increase again. So this is the peak for this one. So this confirms the sensitivity of this probe and it looks good. Now we'll move to the V2 block. So V1 is finished. Now let's keep this aside. Now comes the V2 block. V2 block is very small. It's very easy to handle. It's very mobile, very portable. Now you can see you have some readings over here. Uh, these are the angles. These are also angles on the bottom side. And then you have something like a scale here. This is for, uh, now you can see better. This scale is for measuring the index point of the probe. Uh, this is the model number. Same on the back side. You have angle and so on. Now this one, you can see the angle. Let's try to measure the radius. I think I know the radius, but still let I want to measure it. So this radius on this side, the curve side is 25. And the other side is 50. I just want to confirm it. I just want to show you. So this is 50. So one side is 50, one other side is 25. Now let's test or let's check the index point where is the index point just put a small dab of oil so I can see yeah oh, sorry you cannot see here yeah, you can see I'm putting at index point and what you're getting here is you're getting two peaks <coughs> I just want to make it smaller I think the peaks are too high. I think this is enough. Okay. Somewhere I'm getting a very huge peak. Yeah, this is the peak what we are looking for. Yes. And it is almost 12. <coughs> you can see in the scale. At almost 12 mm, it's confirming that this is the index point. So I can say, or I can just mark at 12 mm, I have the index point. Now let's try to calibrate using this one. Calibration is setting off P delay value. <clears throat> Let me just reduce this one. It's too big. So I'll just remove this P delay value and make it zero. So my P delay value is zero. Now see what happens. If I press this side, I can just roughly see the readings over here. So I am getting a peak of 50. Meaning of this one is I'm sending the sound wave from here to this side and it's coming back. So this distance, so this distance from this point till this circular arc is 50 because the radius of this one is 50. Now if I interchange this one or just rotate this one, now I should get a peak at 25 because the sound is going this way, it goes to this circular boundary, circular I mean, back wall of 25 radius and comes back. So you can see a small signal here at 25. So you can do either ways. If you want to calibrate it or find the index point, you can do it in both ways. So I'm just trying to find the biggest peak. Here I got the biggest peak. Okay. That's the highest peak I'm getting. That's the highest one. Now I want to set the P delay value 
so that this reads as 50 but I need to move this A gate. A gate should be crossing this one so I can read the value. Okay, this one is here. Now go to the base setting. Now just increase the P delay value or decrease it based on the you can see I got 49.90. Just try to go clockwise or anti-clockwise and try to search. Oh, this is the maximum, yeah. <clears throat> so you can see I just set the value of sound path of A or the peak value of this one to 50. You can actually use this scale, but that's very rough or you have so much error, you cannot say which one is 50. So always use an A gate to get the value of these peaks. Now the probe is calibrated. Now let's confirm the angle. So let's try to search where is the angle. I have 60 somewhere here. So if I put the probe on the top side, it should read 50. 60, sorry, not 50, it should read 60. Same way here, 60. So let me just put the probe at 60. I have to put some oil. So why are we putting oil? If you don't put oil, you'll not get peaks or you'll get very small peaks depending on the contact area. So if I just move it, so you can see the peak coming over there. So I can just increase the gain. So you can see it's matching, the index point is matching with the 60 degree angle. You can see index point is as 12, 12 or 13, and it's matching with 60 degrees. So what's happening, we're sending sound from here, from this point. So where is my marker? So here, okay. So we are sending sound from here, going to this hole and it's coming back, okay. That's as simple as it is. <clears throat> so we are done with the calibration, we are done with checking the angle. Now we can just, uh, just put the probe over here. I just want to show you something something interesting so we're getting some peaks now if i keep the probe this way i want to see the second back wall echoes or the second echo what i'm receiving there so you can see the first one is the sound is going from this side towards 25 side so you see the biggest peak now what about the second peak? I'm seeing a second peak over here and what is that? So what's happening? The sound is going from here, it's coming back. After coming back here, it will get reflected again. Here, this side. Then it will come back here. Then at this point it will have one more reflection. It will come back here and then it will come back here and you'll receive the signal. So whatever signal, the sound wave signal you're receiving, you should be received in this angle only. Only going through this angle, it will go to the probe element here inside. If I'm having sound waves coming through this direction or this direction or any other angle, the sound will not re reach this transducer, you'll not get that signal. So how you're getting the signal? When the sound waves goes in this direction, then only it will received by the transducer. So that's the reason why the sound goes 25, then 50, again 25, and then it reaches. So adding it up, it comes around 100. 25 this way, 100 this way, sorry, 50 this way, and then 25 again, and then it's matching with the angle 60. That's why it's receiving the signal. So let me just get the peak for this one. So this is the peak. At 12 mm, you can see exactly it's matching with 12 mm. So now I'll just move the A gate to confirm the small peak is at 100, approximately 100. So you can see if I just move it left or right, it'll reach almost 100. This little smaller, I think I did not calibrate very close, but it's almost 100. Similarly, if I just twist this one, I just rotate this one. Now I'm facing the 50, the bigger radius, the 50 mm radius. So if I'm facing this 50 mm radius, 
what's happening here the sound is going towards the 50 side i'm receiving the first peak at 50 then it will go or if it will reflect here it will go this side it will come back then it will go this side then it will come back so it's going 50 this way then coming back then it's going 25 this way then coming back and then 50 and finally we'll get the sigma so it is 50 plus 25 plus 50 so it comes as 125 so second peak i should get at 125 so you can see it's exactly matching 125 you can see this red color line is a gate it's striking this one let me just make sure it's uh, it's in the center so you can see second peak we're coming it's coming at 125 and then you can see the probe is calibrated now <clears throat> So we are done with the calibration of this probe. This is the end of the second experiment. So angle probe. Now this probe is ready to do for testing. We can test it on some weld plates. We'll be doing the next week. We're we'll using some weld samples. We have some samples over here. So we'll be using these samples next week. So we'll be doing marking something, something like some distances and then we'll measure this one in the next class but for now today i just want to show you something more i just want to show the remaining settings for this one and i will show you how to use this this is normal probe oh, i'll be using i'll just show you how to calibrate using normal probe on the small block you can use the small block as well or you have some calibration settings on this one i just want to show that one so we have just I have just shown you what is the base settings and what is A gate and B gate. Okay, A gate and B gate are almost the same. Now you have something called pulsar setting. So we can see the pulsar setting. Let me just calibrate this quickly, or I can use the angle probe again. So I am getting this kind of a signal. Now see what happens. Let me just move this one. See what happens if I change the pulsar option to something like low. So this is called damping. Damping is how much how much filtering you're doing, how you, how much you're damping it. You can see if I make it low, it becomes very huge peaks. But you'll get so much noise over here. So actually, it's, these are the filters. Then you have power, if you're using high power or low power. So if you're getting very low power, something like it's using very less power. So if you want to increase the power, you can just increase the power using this one. It's very simple. Then dual is for dual probe. And this one is uh, how much, how many signals your pulse you're sending in seconds. So uh, that's why it's no need for you. Receiver also, you have some signals. So pulsar is for sending the signal, how much signal you're sending, receiving is for how much you're receiving. So I can just, you can set the frequency here, it should match the frequency of the probe. You can see it's 4 megahertz, that's why you're getting a good signal. This is rectifier, rectifier is same like signal. So you can set it to full wave, hard wave and negative. So just set it for full. And then you have some more settings. If, you, if I press this button, you'll get some more settings. Calibration, reference, and trigonometry, memory, data. If I press this one, it goes to third level. So you have total three levels of settings. First is the base, pulsar, receiver, A gate, B gate. Second one is calibration. So now we'll be going for this calibration method using a normal probe. Yeah, I've just connected the normal probe over here. Now you have two readings over here. You can see you have two readings here. Your first one is uh, the first reference, second reference, and then you have A gate, and then you have calibration. So I've just set this one. You can just set the first reference of the reference length of what you will measure for calibrating it by itself. So you have to mention two different lengths. If 
first length I put it 25 that's the thickness of this block that's the thickness of this block and the second reference length I keep this this length which is 100 mm and then we have the third one a gate if I want to move this a gate fastly I can just move it this way so let's try to do it let's start one more time so I have just set the first reference value to 25 the second reference value is 100 you can see 25 is this thickness 100 is this length now I'll try to do the calibration I just reduce the size of this a gate because it was too big and it was having some problem so how do I do the calibration first select this first reference value put the probe this way so you're getting peaks at 25 I'll just try to move this one I'll try to move the hand so try to move the a gate on the first first peak this is my first peak and once it's crossing the first peak set this one here and press ok button you can see the enter button over here if I press this one it's it says echo is recorded and same way record the second one second one just select the second reference get a peak and now you have to move this a gate a moving a gate is very important whatever a gate is cutting that peak only the machine takes so it's cutting this peak so this peak then just press enter that's it now you can see at the bottom side calibration is done is written and the machine is calibrated it should read calibration zero the steps are finished so this is how you do calibration automatically you don't need to set the velocity of material you can just check back what is the velocity you can see he is giving some random value or calculated value not random value calculated based on the thickness of this thickness and length of this block so it, it uses two thicknesses to measure the material velocity and set p delay so that's it for today. We'll just continue in the next week. Thank you very much.